that means yes. Buttercup, buttercup, butters all the way. <laughs> Hello, everybody. First and foremost, a huge thank you to everyone for the support. As you've probably heard, we recently had a death in the family, and on top of that, Cliff is in the middle of a very severe flare-up from his chronic pain condition. Since Cliff is starting to feel better, I am easing my way out of hiatus. I'm not 100% sure if I will be back to posting content every week, but I'm here for now, so let's enjoy it while we can. Buttercup's here too. A quick update, I recently discovered that my number one best-selling dark fantasy romance novel, The Savior's Champion, was recently chosen by Amazon for a special Kindle deal. This means that right now, The Savior's Champion is on sale for 99 cents, which is a huge discount. That's like one fifth of the price. So if you haven't read it yet, now is the time to do it. I've got it linked in the description below. 99 cents for the Kindle ebook. Get it now. Well, that said, you guys know my life has been crazy lately, so I thought now was the perfect time to talk about something uplifting and positive, like friendship. You're my best friend, aren't you, Butters? Yes, I am. I'm the bestest friend in the world. A while back, I broke down my 10 least favorite friendship tropes in fiction, and today I'm flipping the script. We're talking about my 10 all-time favorite fictional friendship tropes. I'm talking about the pairings, conflicts, and shenanigans that I love to read about. Isn't that right, Butters? Before we get started, I wanted to give my love to all of my friends over at Skillshare who have sponsored today's video. If you guys have been following me for a while, then you already know that Skillshare is one of my all-time favorite platforms. It's an online community with thousands of super inspiring classes specifically for creative people. They've got classes in a range of topics from illustration to marketing, from graphic design to mailing lists, and of course, they've got classes on creative writing. One of the things I like best about Skillshare is that it's curated specifically for learning. That means there are no ads. Plus, the classes are divided up into bite-sized chunks that you can easily fit into your schedule. And they are constantly releasing new premium classes, which means you can pick up new skills all the time. I'm not only a student at Skillshare, I'm also a teacher. I have two classes available. One is Digital Marketing for Writers, Grow Your Audience and Author Platform, where I teach you how to create a successful writer platform. The second is Digital Marketing for Writers, Planning a Successful Book Release, where I give you marketing tips so you can make a splash when releasing your book. And I may or may not have a third class on the way. Whether you're a novice looking to expand your craft or you're looking to explore completely new skills, Skillshare's got you covered and now is the perfect time to join because it's the holiday season. Spend your time off honing your passions, learn how to make homemade gifts, or even better, take my author classes and up your marketing game. Skillshare is super affordable. An annual premium subscription is less than 10 bucks a month. However, I've got a special deal just for you guys. Stick around until the end of this video to find out more. Before that, I am breaking down my 10 favorite friendship tropes in fiction. These are the tropes that cure my depression, water my crops, and clear my skin because they're so, so amazing. If you wanna hear more about the tropes I love and hate, be sure to subscribe to my channel and ring that bell. I post content on Wednesdays with bonus content on Mondays. We have a good time here, so do it. Number one, betrayal. Oh no. Betrayal, especially in fictional friendships, is so fucking good because it's so fucking bad. Getting betrayed by someone you consider a close friend is such a low blow, and I think everyone can connect to it. I've never betrayed you. That's why it's so effective in fiction. If your main character is betrayed by their friend, you feel that gut punch. It's relatable, it's visceral, it's extremely realistic. And from a writer's perspective, it opens up the story to tons of potential conflict. Not only does your character have the complications of the betrayal to deal with, they also have to deal with the pain of losing a friend. This is a trope I utilize in my own writing and I love to see it in the books I read because it gets me angry and invested every time. Number two, found family. If this one isn't on your personal list of favorite friendship tropes, I'm judging you. 
hard. Found family is not only one of the best friendship tropes, it's one of the best tropes, period. One, it gives writers the opportunity to bring together different, unique characters, which creates a lot more depth and originality in the story. Two, it's entertaining as hell because of all the different personality types thrust together. And three, it's a sweet message. Not everyone is born into a family that loves and accepts them unconditionally. The found family trope gives people hope that they can find and create their own family, one who will care for them as they are. This trope is tried and true, and I will probably never get tired of reading about it. Number three, rivals to friends. Similar to enemies to lovers, it can be really gratifying to see two rivals become friends by the end of the book. I think the reason this trope is so effective is because these two characters instantly have something in common. They are both equally passionate about the same goal. This creates very obvious tension, but it also creates an opportunity for deep and meaningful bonding. We may see the characters compete with one another at the start, but over time they can connect with each other over how much they love whatever they're doing or the annoyances of whatever they're competing for. I like this trope because it's layered. As a writer, it gives you lots of chances to show different sides of your character's personality. Plus, it often creates really entertaining and fulfilling character arcs, and as a character-driven writer and reader, that is exactly what I'm looking for. Number four, the bromance. All I want is some heartfelt, open, platonic affection between men. I love you, bro. I love you, bro. 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 I'm not asking for much here. I think the reason the bromance is popular in fiction is pretty obvious. The goddamn patriarchy. Men are often discouraged from being soft or vulnerable in any way. So when I see men breaking through the mold and saying, fuck you, I'm gonna hug who I want, I get all fuzzy inside. You embrace your inner marshmallow. I support you. I just think it's sweet and endearing. It's fun to read and I want more of it. Number five, the slumber party. It doesn't have to be a literal slumber party, but I love it when books feature some kind of overnight with friends. Sometimes it's an overnight stakeout, sometimes it's camping, sometimes they're going into hiding. I don't know, I don't care, I love it all. I love these situations in fiction because they provide so many opportunities for hilarity to ensue. Someone snores or talks in their sleep, someone wants to cuddle their friend and and their friend is totally not into it. Hell, maybe someone sleeps naked. It's even better if they're drunk or high or under some kind of substance that makes them extra stupid. If they're not being complete idiots or ruining each other's lives, they are bonding and sharing stories and being extra adorable. Give me more slumber parties. They are the perfect opportunity to make the reader laugh and smile. Number six, strictly platonic. I am so sick of friends to lovers. I would much rather see two characters of the opposite gender just be friends. It's possible, I promise. Everyone automatically ships characters with opposite genitalia so long as they look at each other or share a laugh. I remember readers shipping Delphi with Tobias in the scene where she literally talks about being a lesbian. I love a good platonic friendship. No sexual tension, no unrequited love, just Friends! For starters, it normalizes it, which is kind of sad that it needs to be normalized in the first place. Plus, at this point in time, it's an anomaly. It's bold and unusual to let a man and a woman be friends in a book and nothing more. So I say writers, be bold. Please, I'm begging you. On a related note, number seven, the wingman. Friends who want their friends to fall in love or get some action are my kind of crack. I think I enjoy this trope because my personal experience with friendship, at least in the past, was very different from this. Growing up, I had friends who would get jealous if I was dating or didn't want me to meet a guy. Hell, I had friends who ghosted me as soon as I got a boyfriend. It wasn't until I was in my late 20s that I developed friendships with people who were excited to see me in love and happy. Thus, I think it's a really adorable feature in fictional friendships. For starters, it's just plain healthy. A good friend should want their friend to be happy, and if a romantic relationship makes them happy, they should support that. On top of this, it sets the stage for hilarious, awkward, and adorable shenanigans. A friend who's fighting like mad to get their bestie a boo is gonna cause all sorts of trouble, and I want a front row seat. Number eight, the odd couple. We see 
see this a lot in fiction. Two people who seemingly have nothing in common, yet they're best buds. I, for one, am a fan. Now, there are exceptions to the rule. In a lot of books, particularly young adult books, you'll see a friendship where one person is popular and the other is a dork or a nerd. I don't like this version of the odd couple because there's usually the implication that the popular kid ignores their best bud at school and only hangs out with them when no one else is around. That's some shameful bullshit and I don't like it. But give me a satanic goth and a peppy cheerleader and I'm all for it. Give me a bookworm and a bad boy and I'll eat it up. My personal favorite is when one friend is huge and the other is teeny tiny. Number nine, the ew, don't touch me friend. I personally love this fictional friend because I can relate to them. I don't want to be touched either. People are gross. This person doesn't want to hug. They don't express verbal affection. Hell, they probably won't acknowledge the friendship in any manner whatsoever. But they're probably gonna bend over backwards and do something supremely considerate or generous when their friend isn't looking. Or they're gonna risk their ass defending that person, even if it means throwing themselves into the line of fire. Then after all this, they're gonna act like it never happened. Nothing to see here, move along. I don't have feelings, you have feelings. <laughs> loser. Again, this is a trope I personally relate to, so I really appreciate seeing it in fiction. Some people are shit at expressing love through verbal or body language, but are great at expressing it through action, and it's really refreshing to see this kind of love language in media. And number 10, the ride or die bitch. Fairweather friends are the fucking worst, and while I absolutely think reality, both the good and the bad, should be reflected in fiction, I am obsessed with the ride or die friendship trope. The friend who has your back no matter what. The friend you can fight with, but they will still be by your side when shit hits the fan. Emotional maturity for the win. It's just so heartwarming to see this kind of friendship. Plus, it creates lots of opportunities for conflict and subplots. Maybe the ride or die bestie gets kidnapped in the act of riding or dying. Maybe they disagree on something pivotal to the plot and you think this is gonna create a wedge between them, but God damn it, they just can't quit each other. Besties who are here for the long haul make for great solid reading material and I want more of it right now. So that's all I got for you today. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Like I already said, I am not only a student at Skillshare, I am also a teacher. This platform is perfect for creating new skills or honing your craft. Skillshare is super affordable, but right now the first 1,000 subscribers who click the link in the description below will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. That's a free trial for you to explore your creativity, but it's only going out to 1,000 people, so hurry up, click the link in the description, do it now, get some freebies. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I post new videos on Wednesdays, and if you want to be alerted as soon as I upload, ring that bell. My number one best-selling dark fantasy romance novel, The Savior's Champion, is on sale right now for 99 cents. So if you are interested in picking up a copy for cheap, I've got it linked below. And my second book in the series, The Savior's Sister, is available in ebook, paperback, and hardback right now. So if you want to continue the journey and you want to see more of Layla's shenanigans, pick up a copy today. I got all the links listed below. Be sure to follow me on social media. I'm on Instagram, Tumblr, and of course, you can tweet me at Jenna Moresi. Bye. Hey, everyone, I'm Flynn. I fucking love myself. So if you love me and you don't mind a bit of Jenna, then why don't you press the fucking subscribe button? You know you want to, because then you get to hear more of me. Anyways, press that button, ding the bell, and we'll have a great fucking time.